Yo, what is going on guys, it's Cryptic TNG and I'm back with a brand new video and today we're going to be talking about downforce levels and which downforce levels you should choose for tracks like Spa and maybe even tracks like Bathurst which have, you know, incredibly long straights but a very technical middle section where you need your car to have rotation and turn in. So without any further ado, let's get stuck into the video. So here we are in the aero section for the Ferrari 296 and um, guys, around Spa is very, very tricky to understand what you need to do with the downforce especially if you're not as clued up as some of these esports drivers and stuff like that um i can tell you now spa is a track where you do need a lot of straight line speed um and from that you need to also find the balance through the middle sector to make sure you're fast enough through the middle to to you know be competitive over a whole entire lap but in a race situation if you have too much downforce you literally will get stuck behind pretty much everybody so that is the problem with um creating setups with too much downforce around spa and tracks like bathurst when you do get to the parts of the track where you want to overtake you're going to struggle a lot because you're just not going to have the straight line speed to do so so bear that in mind and i'm going to tell you guys what you have to sort of decipher between your your aero balance and rake and all that sort of stuff um so if you're going into this setup and thinking, should I run high downforce around Spa? I'm going to just say that there's probably a limit to how much downforce you should run at Spa. And I know most people are going to be comfortable with, you know, higher downforce setups and having more grip and stuff like that. But in the Ferrari, you probably don't want to do that. You want to, I'll say, at least go between low downforce and mid downforce. I think high downforce is, although it will feel great for the middle, you're just going to struggle in the race personally um you have to bear in mind as well when you do um when you do run lower or medium downforce you can still make your car draggy by having too much rake on your car okay so basically the flatter your car is the faster it's going to be down the straight so if you flatten your car out a little bit then you're definitely going to have more straight line speed um again you have to find the balance because you don't want the car to understeer too much. So you're going to have to use other parts of um, other parts of the setup to get more rotation into the car. And I'm not going to go too much into detail about that. But guys, if you do want more details and stuff and how to get the car to rotate, I am bringing out a book very, very soon. That's got um, all the setup options It's going to teach you guys how to build your own setups and how to affect different things in the car. So watch out for that. That's probably a, a few weeks away. Um, but I will be bringing that book out very, very soon. But anyway, in terms of tracks like Spa, um, the difficulty, as I said, is balancing it between straight line speed and the middle sector and how you can sort of affect your middle sector without, you know, putting on tons and tons and tons of wings. So as I said before, you want to sort of make sure your car is as flat as possible. That's the first thing. Now, I wouldn't go above... I think the max wing I would run at Spa is probably seven, um, which is actually the default. I wouldn't go too much higher than seven. I believe that um, you, you will struggle immensely over lap times. Now, you might feel more comfortable in the race. You might make your tires last a little bit longer. But the, the important thing is to try and get comfortable with being uncomfortable and put yourself in areas where, you know, you're 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 not just doing the same sort of setups all the time. You're actually having to, you know, create new setups and create new ways of finding more time in your setups because there is tons of time in the setup if you can get it right. Now, if you guys didn't know, we have the 24 hours of spa on the weekend, the SRO esports events, and you're going to see tons of the fastest guys on the game racing around spa. Also as well, I believe LFM has it on its um, 45 minute sprint races um, this week as well. So, Get yourselves on Twitch. Make sure you're watching um, all the Fast Guys stream. There should be plenty of Fast Guys and esports drivers streaming this week because they're all going to be getting ready for Spa um, on the weekend. And all you have to do is look at what straight line speed they're getting at the end of the straights. And that's going to help you decipher what sort of wing levels they're running. If they're sort of hitting, I don't know, 172 miles an hour down the Kemmel straight, then you probably know they're running low to mid wing. Um, if they're only getting like 167 or 168, then they're probably running, they're probably on the higher wing side of things. So that's the case. 
if they're on the hiring side of things, then you know they have to be running something extremely aggressive um, so they, they can sort of kill the lap time in the middle sector. And that's that's what you have to think about. If you do decide to go with higher wing, you have to be ready to be extremely aggressive through the middle sector. You have to literally, that is the only place you're going to gain your time. In, probably in the braking zones, maybe acceleration and the middle sector. So when you're driving around the lap, you have to think about these things. If you have decided to go with a certain setup, you have to think about the strengths and the weaknesses of that setup and where your car is strong, you have to master that section of the track. And that is how you're going to get your best lap times because it's all about the compromise, right? Um, especially especially with Spa and tracks like Bathurst, which have two massive long straights and technical middle sectors, you literally have to, you know, think in your mind where your car is strongest and you have to actually make sure you demolish those sectors of the track because you know you're going to be fighting against guys who got similar pace to you and they may go a different way in the setup so you have to sort of you know make sure you're putting your best foot forward in that area of the track now for me personally i believe around spa you probably do want to try and get comfortable with the lower wing because in race situations even if you are faster than somebody in a race if you have too much wing on and you're stuck behind them and they're just playing fast on you down the straight. This game doesn't have like tons and tons of slipstream anyway. So you're going to find it super difficult to, to, to get past them. And around Spa, most overtakes are done in Sector 1 or Sector 3. There's not many people who are pulling off pass maneuvers in Sector 2, right? Um, well, technically they are because it's at the, at the end of the Kemmel straight. But you know what I mean? Through the middle sector, it's sort of single file through... Um, poo on and corners like that it's sort of single file so you're not going to be able to get through there two cars wide anyway um so you have to sort of think okay well if most of the overtaking is done in sector one and sector three i need to be have enough straight line speed or at least good enough acceleration to get right up behind the car in front which can be difficult at spa because you know you've got to go through a rouge and sometimes it can affect your aero balance and stuff like that but for me personally we have to remember that just having low wing is not always enough to have good straight line speed, okay? So you have to run the car as flat as possible. That's one angle. Also, your brake ducts. You have to think about your brake ducts and the temperature of the track and what your brakes are doing in terms of brake temperature as well. That's going to give you straight line speed. And also, um, after you've done that, think about the effect you're going to have in the middle sector and how you can affect your car in the middle sector you'll see a lot of guys running extremely rearwards brake bias okay and that's to get the nose into the corner that's to get the nose into the corner and then they can sort of feather the throttle and go off throttle and the car will come around and then because you're running less wing the car does tend to rotate a little bit more but you have to be careful you don't want to slide the rear of the car especially even if you're going towards the last sector just a little slide cost you so much time in the last sector i've seen it myself okay coming towards the penultimate corner um towards the end of the lap if you get a slide coming out of the middle sector going onto the back straight it literally you end up losing like two temps by the time you get to the bus stop chicane okay so you want your car to be um still have the the, the back end pretty stable and that's one of the reasons why um you're running the car so flat is because the, it's going to still give you that little bit of traction um but of course, you know, it's, it's difficult to to get a car to rotate without messing with the dampers, mechanical grip and stuff like that, which you will need to find the balance for around Spa in particular. What I will say is with this track is when you do run these lower downforce configurations on your setup, you need to be very, very accurate with your, your inputs, man. You can't afford to sort of, um, you know, try and get the turn in one time two times getting things wrong breaking too late and stuff like that because the car is going to be more sensitive because it doesn't have as much downforce but as i said to you guys before watch some of these streamers especially before this weekend or watch them over this weekend and you will see that you can tell a lot of these guys are running lower downforce setups around spa and making it work and obviously we don't have all their secrets and stuff like that um, if you watch, I think, I think Boothby was streaming yesterday in the McLaren doing insane times, like two minute 15s and he had his, his set up on show. Um, I believe he was running like zero wing in the McLaren. 
so clearly they're they're doing stuff enough to um to get away with these setups even though not running wing but the mclaren is a different case because it has insane aero anyway so you can probably just about get away with that i will say you probably need to be quite skilled to drive that car on that sort of um low downforce but it kind of gives you an idea to what you need to be trying to find your lap time now you might think well how am i going to get the car to rotate i need rake i need rake you, you don't necessarily need rake not for this track um not if you want if you want to go for a lower downforce setup now if you want to go for a higher downforce setup maybe eight or nine which i don't know if i recommend then you have to also bear in mind even if you do that and then you add rake to that even more you're going to be so much slower down the straight now if you can get to the end of the straight without getting overtaken then you should literally blitz the middle sector okay that that's going to be your aim you're going to have to literally ring it through that middle sector every single lap because you will be under pressure and i'm sure you guys have seen anyone who's been watching the lfm races or anyone streaming they're doing two minute 15s around spa which is insane lap times literally insane lap times so um you know the competition at the top is going to be very fast but if you do want to improve i would suggest particularly if you're running the ferrari you want to try out five or six wing and just keep changing your ride height and change the balance of the the ride height just from uh, really flat maybe to one click and stuff like that and see what the car feels like um try and mess with your mechanical grip also and your dampers to try and figure out how you can still get the car to rotate but still have that flat surface so you're going as fast as you can down the straight anyway guys it's cryptic tmg like and subscribe hit the notification bell to catch my videos first and peace